serious? We've got a lot to talk about. When the Guild Expedition's new fifth level was launched last week on beta, we learned that the rewards for levels 1 to 4 would also be changed, but only starting this week. And in my first video on the topic, I said this. This could mean, and this is speculation but we'll find out tomorrow, that winning diamonds from the guild expeditions could be receiving a heavy nerf, and we'll have to wait until this feature launches tomorrow to find out for sure. And I'll give you one guess what we found out. That's right, diamond rewards from the guild expeditions have been heavily nerfed, and that's not even the biggest change. Whereas diamonds used to be available throughout all four levels, they are now limited entirely to level four, and only three encounters at that. Now, before, completing all four of those levels would give you an average of about 158 diamonds per week. Now, you only average 81. Instead of about 8,200 diamonds per year on average from the expeditions, you now average only 4,200. Additionally, rewards other than diamonds have been changed quite a bit. Instead of chances at winning the normal guild expedition buildings like the Face of the Ancient or Tribal Square, they have been relegated to one of four selection kits and they're broken down by level of guild expeditions. The level 1 selection kit contains the level 1s and upgrades for the face of the ancient and gate of the sun god. The level 2 kit contains only the level 1 and upgrade for the ritual flame. The level 3 kit contains the level 1s and upgrades for the tribal squares and sacred sky watch. And lastly, the level 4 kit contains the level 1 and upgrade for the terrace farm, as well as the base building and shrink kit for the fountain of youth. That doesn't sound too bad until you realize that these kits are broken down first further into fragments, which are distributed throughout the first four levels of the expeditions. The level 1 kit requires 180 fragments to assemble, the level 2 360, the level 3 360, and the level 4 720. Completing levels 1 to 4 will give you 90 fragments of each, meaning that after all this math, you will get a level 1 kit every 2 weeks, a level 2 and a level 3 kit every 4 weeks, and a level 4 kit only every 8 weeks, or only about 6.5 of them per year. In short, if you want any of these buildings, you would actually be better off just placing and leveling a temple of relics. I just ran the numbers, and it looks like you can get more buildings per week from a level 24 Temple of Relics if you only play the first four levels of the expeditions, and only a level 19 Temple if you play all five levels. Of course, you get something from the Guild Expeditions, right? Well, yes. You now get a lot more Forge Points, Previous Era Goods, and Units. Oh, and more Temple of Relics Blueprints, but they're only from level 3. The problem with all these changes, though, is that you will not get any that's right, zero buildings from a playthrough of all of Guild Expeditions, even level 5. The closest you'll get is 50% of the fragments needed to build a Face of the Ancient or Gate of the Sun God. One of the core best parts about Guild Expeditions, it's easy to obtain buildings, has been removed. Combining all of this, along with the diamond changes and difficulty of level 5, it's incredibly easy to see why these changes are unpopular and even easier to jump onto the negativity bandwagon that has resulted in over 40 pages of negative feedback on the beta forums. But, I can't help feeling that these changes aren't necessarily a bad thing. So, hot take warning, please hold your angry comments until the end. I'm not saying that the Guild Expedition update should be put straight on the live servers without any changes, far from it in fact. But overall, it is a step in the right direction. Now if you'll hear me out, I'll explain why and what I think should be changed from here to the launch on live servers. Starting with why these changes are good. Let's take a look at the super high defense boosts and goods needed to fight or negotiate. The boosts range from 32 to 1021% in the Iron Age, all the way up from 499 to 2569% in Space Age Jupiter Moon. I'll agree with the feedback, that's a little bit high. However, it is extremely refreshing to see somewhere in the game that does not use attack boosts. Forge of Empires has long been dominated with the singular strategy of only getting more attack boosts, and I think it's a positive change to have an area of the game move away from that. 
I would argue that the boosts maybe be changed to about the same values as level 4, but being defense instead of attack, meaning the max enemy boost in Space Age Jupiter Moon would be only 569 instead of 2569. It would still be a difficult challenge as most players don't have high defense boosts, but it would still be possible and not too far out of the question to build some defensive buildings for. In terms of negotiations, same kind of idea. I like that they're actually useful for level 5, but I wish that they weren't insanely expensive. Interestingly though, we did get a response on the difficulty of the expeditions, being mainly that there will be new sources coming soon where we can get more defense boosts, and that the high difficulty is an intended feature. However, as we don't currently have those sources, we can only give the logical feedback that the difficulty is too high as of right now. In short, don't go grabbing your pitchforks for level 5 until we see the direction the game actually goes. We might get ways to get tons of defense boost for our cities, so by the time level 5 rolls out to live servers, the difficulty might not be an issue after all. Also on the defensive boost topic, I caught a lot of flack on my last video for saying that you should probably save defensive buildings starting now until we see how all these changes turn out, and I still stand by that. You don't have to place down any defensive buildings, in fact I recommend not doing that right now. But maybe just don't trade away everything defensive to the antiques dealer, like usual, and also consider leveling your terracotta army, which helps your attacking armies too, and it's a cool great building, so I mean, it doesn't hurt you. On the topic of the selection kits though, I'm still not a fan of tons of fragments, I would much rather you get a full copy of each level's selection kit after completing each level. Cause that makes sense, don't you think? I can understand why the developers don't want you getting tons of each building and then selling them in the antiques dealer, which kind of unbalances the auctions when players have millions of trade coins to spend. However, it just feels bad to not have a building to place down, and it also makes it much harder for newer players to get access to these rewards. Along those lines, let's talk about the Forgotten Temple, which ironically, you've probably forgotten about by now. It's so hard to get currently, but requires four weeks worth of fragments to get one of. I would much rather it only last one week instead of four and have the ability to win one full one from only one week of expeditions. That way you would get something tangible for completing all five levels instead of just an arbitrary amount of fragments. Similarly with the Feathered Serpent, it's extremely powerful, but it's really annoying to get nothing for pushing through level five other than fragments. It would be nice to get, at the very least, one tail piece for the serpent every week, for example maybe a chest with with a 33% chance of each one, once again reducing the amount of fragments that we have to deal with. And now we come to the hottest take of them all in this video, and I know I'm gonna get flamed in the comments for this. I'm fine with the diamond change. Is it frustrating? Absolute. Do I want more diamonds? You could bet your last pot of gold on it. But can I understand why the diamonds have been nerfed? Yes. In fact, I'm surprised that they haven't been nerfed sooner. Of course I wish that the diamonds weren't touched, but it has been absolutely insane how many diamonds they've let us get away with for years. At least I haven't made any videos that would be outdated by this change. Uh. Now if only we got back the option to buy the event pass with diamonds and I would be happy. In summary of everything I've said though, we've been living pretty high on the hog in terms of rewards from the guild expeditions, and these changes are bringing us back to normal amounts of rewards, while also setting up potential value for defensive army focused buildings and goods producing buildings that will hopefully be released in the future. So please, put down your pitchforks and let's have an actual discussion about it. Also, as a reminder, please, please, please don't go after any of the forum moderators and just be nice. You can give criticism without being mean to those who are just doing their job. And with that said, I'd like to hear your thoughts. What should be changed, and would you consider building defensive army buildings if Guild Expeditions Level 5 came to live servers, or if other areas of the game started using defensive boosts more? And in the spirit of watching it before it becomes outdated with these expedition changes, check out my video on everywhere where you can get diamonds, linked on screen now. I can't wait to read your spicy comments, and I'll see you next time.